Hi, hello, I hope that you're doing well today. I'm actually having a surprisingly good day. I'm just gonna sip a little water. Mm, mm, mm -hmm. Oh, I should do ASMR. Tap, 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 tap. I should do ASMR. And go ahead and just peel this orange. I'm just gonna go ahead and peel this orange really quickly, okay? Can you hear it? Can you smell it? Can you smell it? Can you feel it? I'm just going out and I'm peeling an orange. Hold on, I'm just, it's getting a little messy. It's juicy. I'm just going ahead, I'm getting real, real juicy right now as I peel this orange. Is that relaxing? Hold on. Oh, I'm covered in orange juice. God damn it. I'm just going to take one little bite of this orange. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. It's so, so citrusy. Oh my God. That's actually really good. That orange is fr from my, my backyard. Oh, I got orange juice on my pants. Oh, mm. oh man, I'd be terrible at ASMR. Y'all like ASMR? It's a, it's a real kind of niche thing, huh? It's very polarizing. Like I'll come across videos and sometimes I'm like, oh, that's kind of nice. It tickles my ears. And then other ones, I'm like, get the fuck away from me, bro. No one wants to hear you eat Cheetos. Nobody, nobody. But there's an audience for it, apparently. ASMR. It's a whole thing, huh? Uh, I feel like there's like a good like ASMR sketch. Although I suggested that to someone, they're like, yeah, it's been done 8,000 million times. Not an original idea, Laura. You suck. Go kill yourself. What? Whoa, don't. Um, okay, so a couple things that I want to update you on. This orange is oh, so good. You know why? It's from my backyard. Oh, it grows in my backyard. Uh, and it's really, really good. Um, I've got a lot of fruit trees. Anyway, couple updates. Ah, battery. Hold on. Okay. Couple updates. Hi. Hello. Oh, and before I update, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that like button and uh, subscribe and hit the bell next to the subscription so you get notified. I don't know why I put the wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable, but notified. You'll get notified, not notified. Uh, so a couple things. I decided I'm fucking done, bro. I'm done talking about my situation. I'm done talking about my, I'm not even going to say what it is because that's how much I'm done talking about it. But it rhymes with preparation or mapamation. Okay, I think you know what I'm talking about. Well, I'm not gonna talk about it because I'm done, because I hit a br true breaking point talking about it. And I am not strong enough to hear everyone, this is the last thing I'll say, and then I am truly done talking about it after this last thing about it. I'm done talking about it. I... <laughs> That hurt my throat. I am not strong enough to hear your opinions on what you think I should be doing and how you think I should be handling it. And, you know, whether you think I shouldn't have done something or I should have done something or he's this and she's that and they this. <coughs> I can't fucking handle it. It's too much. And then I am tempted to respond and go, you don't know. And you don't, if only you, blah, blah, blah. no, no, bro. And I'll say this. And then I am done talking about what, imagine this whole podcast is me talking about it, going, I am done talking about it after this. I am done talking about it. But firstly, we are not on the same page. Clearly that's all public. Oh, mm. I'm so sorry that I'm eating on this, but this orange is, oh. I think I just 
orgasmed a little. Wow, that is really tangy and really good. But here's the thing. We are not really on the same page, okay? And and like, he's his own person. He's going to do what he's going to do. And I have to, like I've talked about 8,000 times, like get into radical acceptance of the situation and accept the situation exactly as it is. Because if I'm in resistance with the reality of what is, I'm suffering unnecessarily. And that doesn't mean not having the courage to change the things I can. It doesn't mean being a doormat, but it does mean accepting the things I cannot control. So that is a daily practice for me, but I have decided for me, and I'll tell you what the breaking point was. I'm going to go ahead and tell you what my breaking point was. And then after this, I am done talking about it. I am done talking about it after this one little story. I am done. I am done after this. Oh, that orange. Oh, yeah. I have never in my life, I've never in my life experienced an orange so delicious. So there is a TikTok trend going around. Okay. Funny ass TikTok trend. And the whole premise is like, here's what it is. It's like a kid laughing at the mom And the caption is laughing at my mom's dumb jokes. So I get more presents for Christmas and she's laughing at her mom's jokes. And then she turns to the camera, you know, dramatically, um, and like gives the camera this evil stare and there's like a slow-mo zoom on it. And that's the concept. Like, it's funny. It's not the mom's in on it. It's funny. It's like, and then there's other ones were like very common one is like laughing at my husband's lame jokes. So he'll do the dishes later. And then she's like laughing at the joke ha, 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 and then turns to the camera with this evil stare, you know? And then there's a dude doing it and he's like laughing at my girlfriend's uh, corny joke. So she'll put out tonight <laughs> and he's laughing ha, 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 and then stares you know, maniacally into the camera. Like that is just the, the trend. And, and I liked it. I thought it was funny. And so I was like, I want to do my own take on it. So I did one that said laughing at baby daddy's lame ass jokes. So he'll watch the kids more, (laughs) which I genuinely thought that Steven would find that funny. Like, okay, I was wrong, but I at the time, I was like, this is a trend. This is funny. Like, we're friends. Like, we're, I'm a comedian. Like, there's no way he's not going to find this funny. Well, he didn't. <laughs> and although he had commented on on the TikTok, like, laughing about it, but I'm sure he was just, like, trying. And so I did feel bad. And then he, like, but instead of telling me, that he was upset. He made this video like, how dare I, now I'm a baby daddy. And I think he was just very offended by the term baby daddy, which I actually think it's kind of cute or like I'm baby mama. Like I, I'm baby mama. Like I, I don't know. I, I feel like maybe it's a cultural thing. I'm justifying it, whatever. He was upset by it. And I truly just thought it was funny because I mean, I'd seen so many of the trends that I just didn't think it was that big of a deal. And anyway, my point is he got upset and of course another video went up and then I had his fucking cult coming after me, uh, saying, how dare you? And it was like, oh, you know, I'm so done. I'm so done. Cause I was trying to make light of the situation. I was trying to make a playful joke, like all the other hundreds of thousands of trends that were doing that kind of joke. Like these kids were just messing around saying, laughing at my mom's joke. So I get more presents, like laughing at his jokes. So he watches the kids more. Like, I just, I don't know. I'm still justifying it. Whatever. I, I wish that he just told me, can you take it down? I don't like that. And I would have done that rather than making this video kind of saying how offensive it is and then I'm getting attacked and it's just at that moment I realized 
well, it, my part is not showing him the video and going, hey, do you think this is funny? Can I post this? I should have done that. There's my part. But I also had this big realization of like, I'm done making jokes about the situation or like, because I'm trying to be lighthearted about it, as lighthearted as you can be. I'm trying to like, you know, if like someone sends me a comment, there's no hell low enough for you you know, because they're mad that I'm separated or whatever. And like, I'm trying to make jokes about it. I'm fucking done doing that, bro. Because I can't, I cannot handle the, the heat. I, I can't. And so I, I don't want to subject myself to it. Now, whatever he posts and whatever he says, that's his life. That's his, um, decision. And I may continue to get people judging me based on his posts and what he says about me or whatever. And that's out of my control. But what is not out of my control is, you know, the content that I choose to put out. And so I've decided that I'm done talking about the situation. After this next story that I'm about to tell you, I am done talking about this situation. <laughs> um, yeah, I've just decided I'm done. I, I, after that day, I was like, this is a fucking circus. Like, this is insane. And I want no part in the circus. I really don't. Um, so I booked my amazing DP, Chris, who y'all know from Shane Dawson's podcast, but he um, is amazing. And he um, is filming with me all month. And we're making comedy. I just wrote this new character that I'm really excited about. Um, her name is Shimoni Ribbon. She's a motivational speaker. And take my course, you fucking loser. <laughs> uh, I, I just like, because you know what it is? I've been watching so many um, like motivational videos, uh, just trying to get my head right. And I'm just like, I feel like that whole world is really funny. And like there, need, there needed to be a character around it. Anyway, I'm very excited about it. If you get up after the sun, fucking loser, take my course. <laughs> like they're so intense. If you're not j diving in a bucket of ice water and cold plunging every chance you get, loser, take my course. Like why, why is it so extreme? <laughs> anyway, I just thought it was funny. You've got six seconds to change your life. Really? Do you? Okay. So anyway, uh, that's what I'm doing. I, I've, I'm filming a bunch with people I love and making comedy again and just focusing on staying positive, which brings me to my next little point here um, because I am done talking about the other thing. I am done. I am done talking about it after just this one last, no, I'm just kidding. But that was my breaking point. So it happened. And I'm, I'm almost happy it did because I was like, I was trying to make light of it. I was trying to make jokes about it. I was, I was talking about it on the podcast, like trying to be vulnerable. And like, it is what it is. It's out there. Like, it might as, you know, and now I've decided I just, it's too painful. It's too real. It's like, I don't want to subject myself to the opinions of thousands of, of, people and and I know that that's still going to happen because of you know what's happening on his side but at least I can kind of I can control what I can control and this is what I can control so I am done mark my words mark my words which brings me on to my next point which is a book called it's actually a pamphlet called the seven day mental diet Y'all, I actually talked about this like years ago on my old podcast and I tried it and I failed miserably, okay? So it was written by a spiritual leader uh, called Emmett Fox. And essentially it's like a seven day mental diet where you cannot dwell in negativity for seven days straight. Now, I don't think that this constitutes as like toxic positivity because it's not like you're ignoring your problems forever. It's like seven days where you're not allowing yourself to dwell in negativity. So the way our bodies work is based on the food we put in them. The mind is no different. Everything in your life today is conditioned by habitual thinking. The way you have thought in the past has led you to where you are right now. 
This is a quote from him, from Emmett Fox. So the diet consists of the following. For seven days straight, you're going to carefully select your thoughts. During those seven days, you will not hold on to any negative thoughts. If you're willing to take this challenge, um, you'll discover what you need to do below. So like, <laughs> so it's not that you can't have the thought, right? Because we can't always control the thoughts that just pop into our our head, it's like, you will not hold on to the negative thoughts. And again, this is just for seven days. <laughs> Yo, I tried this for one day and I couldn't do it, but like, I'm determined to try it again. Yo, I should start it tonight. Cause, and then next week on the podcast, I can tell you how many days I lasted. Okay. Here are the three rules of the seven day mental detox. If you're interested in this. Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. First rule for seven consecutive days, you will not dwell on any unresourceful thoughts or emotions. These include the following thoughts that make you feel angry or frustrated. Now, again, hear the, this word dwell. I think this is really important because it's, it's not like we're not allowed to think those thoughts. It's dwell in them, right? So you will not, um, you will not dwell on any unresourceful thoughts or emotions. These include the following thoughts that make you feel angry or frustrated thoughts that make you feel jealous of others. Fair enough. Compare and despair, bitches. Thoughts that make you feel stressed or anxious. Who? Thoughts that make you feel inferior or insecure. Thoughts that make you feel sorrow or despair. Negative thoughts about yourself, someone else, or the circumstances that you find yourself in. And thoughts that fill you with regrets about the past or fear about the future. Here's how Emmett Fox defines negative thinking. Negative thinking is when you are dwelling on failure, disappointment, or trouble. Any thought of criticism or jealousy or spite or condemnation of others or yourself, or any thought of sickness or accident. In short, any kind of limitation or pessimistic thinking. Any thought that concerns you... Uh, <laughs> Any thought that concerns you are anyone else that is not positive or constructive. I think it meant any thought that concerns you or anyone else that is not positive or constructive. Notice that the rule isn't that you can't have any negative thoughts, but that you're not to dwell on them. As Emmett Fox pointed out, you can't control the first thought that enters your mind. However, you can control the second one and the ones after that. So the second rule, are y'all ready for this? The second rule is when you catch yourself having negative thoughts during the seven day period, and you will immediately snap yourself out of it and shift your focus to something else. You can do any of the following. This is wild. Okay, here's what you can do. Tell yourself, stop to interrupt the cycle, but you have to scream it like that. You have to go, stop no matter if you're at the office or anywhere else. I'm just kidding. So tell yourself, stop. There's an exclamation mark to interrupt the cycle. Um, accept that you're having the negative thoughts and then, f and then allow them to drift through your awareness like clouds drifting through the sky. Simply allow the negative thoughts to float by without placing your attention on them. You can distract yourself by doing something else. You can read, exercise, uh, get to work on a mentally challenging task. You can call an upbeat friend, turn on some music, sing along or sing a song and so on. Um, change your perspective. Ask yourself, is this thought true? Is it really true? Is there another way to see or interpret this? Shift into problem solving mode. If your negative thoughts are warning you that something's wrong or that there's a problem that needs to be addressed, shift your focus to looking for a solution to the problem. So that's interesting. It's not like we can't have problems these next seven days. It's simply that we need to focus our attention on the solution rather than the problem. So, oh, this person's being this way. What's the solution here? <laughs> My toddler's having a tantrum. What's the solution here? Rather than focusing on the tantrum, what's the solution? Keep in mind, due to the negative bias, your brain is always on the alert for anything that can go wrong. For every negative thing your brain calls 
your, um, calls your attention to. Come up with a list of five things that are going right. I love that. I absolutely love that. Wow. So for every one negative thing your brain calls attention to, come up with a list of five things that are going right. Brilliant. Okay. We're almost done here. Here's the third and last rule for the seven day mental diet, which come on y'all. Why wouldn't you try it? I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it. Okay. Again, (laughs) third rule. If you catch yourself indulging in or dwelling on unresourceful thoughts, don't beat yourself up. Just switch your focus to more empowering thoughts immediately. However, if you find yourself ruminating on the negative thought for more than one minute, you have to start over. What? Okay. So you got one minute, bitch. You got one minute minute to sulk, bitch. One minute. 61 seconds. You're starting that week over. Ho oh, ho. But you're telling me I can dwell for 50 seconds. That's pretty nice. So if you find yourself ruminating on the negative thought for more than a minute, you have to start over. Wait until the next morning and start the seven day mental detox again from day one. Wow. So you wait until the morning, the next morning. Ooh, that night though. Ooh, I'm going to be bitching. I'm going to be judging. I'm going to be critiquing. I'm going to be gossiping. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, um, it's like a binge. (laughs) Here's Fox. As you embark on any diet, you know that your mind plays tricks on you. You crave the old food you used to partake of. This diet is no different. You will find your mind wanting to go toward the negative, wanting to say something or gossip about someone or something. Sometimes it will be exhausting to fight the urges you have to just say one thing, much like just having one taste of that delicious cake when you are on a food diet. So if you make a false start or fall off the wagon, you must stop and start again the next day. Wow. Okay. Wait. And then this, like, we're almost done here. So here's like little tips if you want to do this with me. Okay. Cause I'm fucking doing it. I'm starting in the morning. Four tips that will help you succeed. Set your intention. Begin each morning setting the intention to manage your negative thoughts throughout the day. You can set this intention by saying the following to yourself. Just for today, I will carefully monitor what I'm thinking. Just for today, I will only think thoughts that are beneficial to me. Again, it's not denying the problem. It's focusing on the solution. Um, And then for every negative thought, what are five things that are going right? Just for today, I will challenge any negative thoughts I may have and replace them with more empowering thoughts. Just for today, if I find myself dwelling on a problem, I will immediately switch my focus to looking for a solution. The second tip is meditation. Um, The third is affirmations, which y'all know I'm all about. Um, and there's tons of affirmations you can use. I consciously choose what I think. My thoughts don't control me. I can change what I'm thinking at any time. I think that's the important thing because like we can't control the initial one, but we can, ch- we can choose to change what we're thinking at any time. I can always choose different thoughts. I choose thoughts that serve me well. I'm training my brain to go in a different direction when negative thoughts pop in my head. I may not be able to control the first thought that enters my mind, but I can control the second. I'm slowly rewiring my brain into a positive way by choosing better thoughts. And then four is just fill your mind with positivity. That's like watching motivational YouTube videos or my new character, (laughs) Um, listening to an uplifting podcast. Hey, it's me, bitch. Uh, If you're religious, reading from the Bible or the holy book, listening to an audio program by someone you admire, such as Earl Nightingale or Wayne Dyer. Yo, I actually love Wayne Dyer. Conclusion, if you are up for the challenge, let me know in the mother effing comments below. Let me know if you're in. Why not just try it in the morning? Like, think about it. I mean, it, you don't have to do it, but like our thoughts are powerful and um, they help create our reality. So isn't that wonderful and exciting? Anyway, that's what I'm doing and I'll let you know how it goes. Make sure to comment 
your thoughts on this episode in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe and hit the like button. It helps me always. And um, if you're listening on Spotify, just continue to follow. And I love you all so much. Until next week. Um, I love you. Bye.